Hi everybody, uh, my name is David and this is Eric. Uh, we are just so grateful, thanks Dale and Travis, uh, for inviting us as you know, a bunch of our heroes in the room. So this is a really, a really big honor for us. Um, we're gonna do things a little bit differently. So before we get into um, actually what we built, we wanna tell a little story, actually the story that Dale just alluded to. So I'll hand it over to Eric. All right, thanks Dave. Um, yeah, everyone has a story that gets them started. Ted had his boat, I guess, everyone has that. Well, we have a story about a cave and buried treasure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, okay, here's how the story goes. Uh, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> Flashback, mid-1800s, middle of the gold rush, Northern California, two Native American men rob a gold mining operation, making way with an estimated 100 pounds of gold before killing the two guys that they rob. So um, it's the Wild West. A sheriff posse is gathered to chase after them, and they're on the run. Uh, but they're carrying all this gold, and the gold's weighing them down, so they have to ditch it. They have to get rid of it in an effort to get away. So they do so. And... Um, just a little while later, despite their efforts, the posse catches up with them and says, tell us where you hid this gold and we'll spare your lives. Both men said they hid it in this cave called the Hall City Cave in Northern California. Um, and uh, despite the sheriff posse's promise, both men were hung on the spot. It's the Wild West, right? So the posse goes in search of this cave and apparently they find it. Um, reportedly they find this cave and they go into the back of it and uh, they walk all the way to the end and they don't see anything except for at the very end is this puddle, just a puddle in the back of the cave. And in the back of that puddle is this almost perfectly six foot diameter, uh, almost perfectly circular six foot diameter hole that goes straight down as far as they can see. So uh, presuming the gold was thrown down there, nothing to do to explore it at the time, they give up. <sighs> Flash forward, mid-1980s, this uh, treasure hunter, you know, um, explorer extraordinaire, uh, here's this story, and he, he hires this old timer to tell him where this cave is. And uh, reportedly, he goes to the cave, he finds it, he goes in the back, he finds the puddle, and uh, using uh, snuba, which is like scuba diving but with an air hose, goes down the maximum length of his hose, 50 feet, and shines his waterproof flashlight down and sees nothing. The tube just keeps on going as far as he can see. Um, on one point, he was trying to uh, explore it, and he swam up this one shaft. His regulator pulled out, and he almost died. Um, and that was kind of the last there was any writing about this cave. No one has ever found the end of the cave. No one knows what's down there. No one's ever found the gold. Um, and... Uh, so that's something that seemed really interesting to us, and it got us started. <laughs> so Eric told me that story about a year ago, and I was just like, wow. And this was right after I had gone to Maker Faire and was totally blown away by everything that was happening. I was just really, really impressed. Um, and Eric told me that story. I was like, wow, this is something I want to do. I want to be involved. And I knew about DIY drones, and I knew about MakerBot. Um, and I said, you know, Eric, why don't we you know, try and do something like that? Why don't we make it bigger, make it open source, um, and see what happens? And so we've done that, and we've created a, a forum online, openrov.com, and you know Matt's in, Matt's in the room, Matt's uh, part of the community. Um, it's, it's a really diverse and dynamic group. I mean, we have professional ocean engineers, and we have complete amateurs uh, like myself, and it's just a, it's a fun discussion, and we're really trying to ask the questions about you know, how can we bring um, this kind of open source hardware to um, underwater technology. It's kind of tricky, so you know, a lot of people are working on uh, Argicopters and, and flying devices, but when you get underwater, uh, a lot of the different dynamics change. So um, we've been working on that problem, and this is our latest design. Yeah, cool. So um, I thought Mark made a really good point that there's this huge number of people out there who um, have some spare time, maybe a little disposable income, and a lot of creativity. Um, and uh, that's something that we want to leverage here. Um, so we've come up with a design that anyone can build. Um, this is something that could be built on the weekend by a a family in their garage and they could use it in their pool, but it's capable of doing real science. We want this to not just be something you play with in your pool, but something that you can use to explore uh, unknown worlds. Uh, think about the number of people who spend hours every day playing World of Warcraft and you know they spend all this time and, and at the end of it all they've done is flipped bits. We want them to flip rocks. We want this to be a real thing. So um, OpenROV is made out of laser cut acrylic. We wouldn't have been able to do this without Tech Shop. We were able to go and just start coming up with designs and pressing print. Um, and uh, all the pit parts kind of fit together, almost like Legos. And so uh, you just kind of put them together. It takes maybe a few hours to assemble. It's really fun to do. In the front, we have a camera. And that camera sends live video images up to the surface. So you have a live video image of what the ROV sees. And you can control it with a, a game controller, just like playing a video game. Um, and then um, in the back, you have these uh, fans um, that are uh, uh, attached to brushless um, motors just like you use in an RC airplane. All these are off-the-shelf parts that you can buy. They're around, and what we're doing is we're just using them inappropriately. That's one thing that I think this movement's all about, right? So, 
So it's easy to build. Um, you can do it quickly, but it's capable of going deep. We've designed it to go to 100 meter depth. Um, that's, that's deep enough that there's no light that you, um, there's very little light. You see species you wouldn't normally be able to see. Um, so you can do some real cool exploration. And you know, this cave is just one story. Think about around the world, how many cool places there could be to explore. So I just want to end this by telling you that that cave was unexplored up until a few weeks ago. So we went back to the cave uh, last weekend, and we're being pretty tight-lipped about it. But if you want to find out more, make sure you go out and uh, join the community on openrv.com. Thank you. <laughs>